Hello everybody and welcome back. I hope you're doing well and that you are off to a good start today. Um, I've been thinking about you and what you might be up to today and it's a little bit soggy this morning so it's a good day to go outside and make mud pies. Do you know how to make mud pies? You just go to a muddy spot and you get some kind of container. It's good to use your recycling for this, not something fancy. And you put some mud in it and then you decorate your mud pie with some um, flowers. Dandelions look good on a mud pie or some sticks or some little pebbles. The things that you can find in your back garden. Um, and you make a mud pie and you feed it to your toy dinosaur or you feed it to your doll if you like dolls or you feed it to your imaginary friend Soren Lawrenson, but you do not feed it to yourself. Do not eat the mud pie. Nobody wants that. Okay, so I have a message, a story, a poem, and an activity. And this is the story of Alma. So this inspired that today will be all about names. Your name, my name, anybody's name. We're going to make some name art. Alma and how she got her name. And this won the Caldecott Award, which is the highest award for picture books. It's by Juana Martinez Neal. Alma, and how she got her name. And I, I um, think you should ask your parents how you got your name if you didn't, if you don't know. Maybe it's for someone in your family. Maybe it's a word your parents thought was pretty. Maybe the meaning is very important. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela had a long name. Too long, if you ask me. If you asked her. That's important. Doesn't say me. My name is so long, Daddy, it never fits, Alma said. Come here, he said. Let me tell you the story of your name. Then you decide if it fits. Sophia was your grandmother, he began. She loved books, poetry, jasmine flowers, and of course me. She was the one who taught me how to read. There's a picture. I love books and flowers, and you too, Daddy. I am Sophia. Esperanza was your great-grandmother, he continued. She hoped to travel, but never left the city where she was born. Her only son grew up to cross the seven seas. Wherever her sailor son went, so did Esperanza's heart. The world is so big. I want to go see it, Daddy. You and me together. I am Esperanza. Jose was my father, Alma's daddy said. He was an artist with a big family, like many people back, had back then. Early each morning, he walked to the mountains and to the plazas to paint everyday life. Sometimes I went along. Your grandfather taught me to see and love our people. I wake up early every day and I draw a lot too. This morning I drew a kitty cat for you, Daddy. I am Jose. Pura was your great aunt. She believed that the spirits of our ancestors are always with us, watching over us. When you were born, she tied a red string around your wrist, a charm to keep you safe. Hello, Pura. It's me, Alma. Candela was your other grandmother. She always stood up for what was right. I am Candela. I love the story of my name. Now tell me about Alma, Daddy. Where does 
that come from? I picked the name Alma just for you. You are the first and the only Alma. You will make your own story. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela. That's my name. And it fits me just right. I am Alma and I have a story to tell. Alma. Mi historia. A note from Juana. That's the author illustrator of this book. My name is Juana Carlota Martinez Pizarro. My father named me Juana after his mother, Juana Francisca. My mother chose the name Carla to honor the memory of her uncle Carlos. My father was a man of decisions, so when it came time to register my birth, he changed Carla to Carlota on the birth certificate. He was convinced that Juana Carlota was the mighty name he wanted for his daughter. Thanks to that change, I got stuck with what I thought was an old-fashioned, harsh, ugly, and way too Spanish name in all of Lima, Peru, where I grew up. Little did I know that later on, after I moved to the United States, it would feel unique and remind me every day of where I come from. What is the story of your name? What story would you like to tell? Well, I think that this was one of the most special books we have read this year. There's Juana Martinez Neal. Um, she's the daughter and granddaughter of artists. She started her story in Lima, Peru, and then moved to the United States. Juana is still writing the story of her life and with the help of her family in Arizona. This is a wonderful book. I love the illustrations and how they added to the story and how this is the kind of book you read more than once. You take your time. The words are little, but they're beautiful. They're chosen very beautifully. There's a lot of meaning and there's a lot of special things about the people in her family. No two of them were the same. They all had different things that they contributed to who she was. So today you go find out who your people are in your family. Ask your mom and dad why their names are their names. That's a good conversation to have today on a day when we're having our indoor adventure. Alma was a top 10 book. 10 out of 10 and my one of my new favorites. That was the first time I've read that one. Okay, I have a poem. It is silly. Alma was not silly. It was a, just a beautiful book. And what she thought was a problem ended up being something beautiful about her. Um, I have a silly poem and then an activity. This is about Watson Watts. I picked it because he has a fun name with alliteration. Watson Watts atop his head balanced 40 loaves of bread. 40 loaves, no less, no more. Not one crumb fell to the floor. On his shoulders, Watson Watts balanced 40 flower pots. 40 pots, no more, no less. Yet he met with great success. Watson balanced on his knees 40 chunks of cheddar cheese. 40 chunks, no less, no more. Just like loaves and pots before. Uh-oh. Watson Watts upon his legs balanced 40 ostrich eggs, 40 eggs, no more, no less. It took months to clean the mess. That is silly. Uh, if you want to guess who did this one, if you said Jack Prelutsky, you are correct. Something big has been here. I only brought a few poetry books to my house when I cleaned the classroom and found the special things for um, at-home adventures. And so I think I'm going to look up some classic ones for the remaining days that I'm doing these stories. I love silly ones. I think I'm going to look up some, some uh, ones that stimulate your brain in a different way. Okay, our activity today you can do like yesterday with a paintbrush um, and water and on your ground outside. You can do it with uh, the new crayons I gave you. I'm picking markers. And so I'm just going to write names in different ways. And I liked Alma's name, so that's the one I'm going to pick. You can do your name. You can use the word cat. You can um, do your sister's name and make a, make a name poster for a present. That would be a nice thing to do today. Um, on the cover of Alma, they used bubble letters. So I'm just going to do some different kinds of letters. And then you can do what you want to do with your name. I'm going to make one tall and skinny Alma. A L M A. 
You can hardly tell that I wrote Alma. How about I go opposite and I make a really wide Alma. A-L-M-A. That one reminds me of a snail. How about one with decorations? How about some things that represented Alma? So Alma liked paintbrushes. So there's a paintbrush on her name. Alma liked thinking about traveling the world. And what else did Alma like? She liked drawing. So I'll turn this guy into a pencil. Maybe you can put decorations on your letters of your name of the things that you like. Um, she drew a cat on the wall, so I think I'm just going to turn this M into a kitty cat with some simple lines. And I think that's pretty good. You can make your letters all kinds of ways. I'm going to try another thing, a puzzle name that I saw somebody do. They made a kind of cursive to do this. So maybe you can practice your name with cursive. So a person that I saw do this did their name in cursive, but they did it more than once. And they looped bigger and smaller. And I'm not going to finish this whole thing because it would take me a very long time. But in the end, they chose different sections and colored them differently like like in the center this one is blue and then another section might be blue but sections that touch each other are different colors I think this guy wants to be blue and I'm not coloring it all the way in I'm just giving you an idea I would go back over this and do it much more neatly and take some time listen to some music do a meditation and think about my own name, think about this story. But this would make a really neat gift for somebody in your house. Or put it on the postcard, a travel postcard, for somebody that you love and send it in the mail. I will see you later. I'm very proud of the work that you're doing and how excited you were over yesterday's game. And I am happy to see you today where we'll learn about elephants so excited to learn about elephants and then tomorrow we have a special guest i love you see you in a few minutes oh and if you're getting this this morning nine o'clock party with me cuckoo kangaroo we're gonna do some exercise dance party at nine o'clock i love you see you later